Hi, welcome to Brain Doodles. I'm Beetle. And I'm Kyle, and today we're about to spoil every single story we talk about, so get ready to spam that pause button. Let's start creating. Okay, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about contrast and story, um, more specifically um, how it kind of pertains to the tone of shows and, you know, how that kind of affects character emotion. There's a lot of examples of this you can see in things, uh, mainly animated things. It seems to be a lot more popular there, but that's also because we've been watching a lot of animated stuff recently, so that's kind of on us. But uh, things like <laughs> Ruby uh, by Rooster Teeth, uh, there's also Steven Universe, which Beats is a big fan of. Uh, I personally like more into anime, where you get some things in like ReZero, which if you haven't heard of that, it's a... How would I describe that one? It's a... There's a, there's a name for that genre, isn't there, Beats? It's like, like journey to another world kind of genre. Yeah, it's like um, it's the putting a character into a fantasy world genre, a normal like modern character into a fantasy world genre. So there's stuff like that, but you can also see it in live action stuff. There's uh, web series. You have video game High School. We think it pops up there a bit, and then there's also a series of unfortunate events, the new version that just came out on Netflix, which. Uh, is also a good example of it, and then even some movies like we're. I would say Rogue One falls into the kind of character, or excuse me, the contrast, tone, emotion shift that we're talking about here. Yeah, uh, so let's get a little into what that exactly means. Um, so, the tone shift is when you have you know either a very light uh, tone of your story, and then it dramatically shifts to something dark to kind of help convey you know, how the characters are feeling. It's also a bit of a surprise factor as well, because when you're watching a lighthearted show, you don't, after a while, you don't usually expect it to go to that darker area. And then when it does, it's surprising and shocking, and it's the uh, getting hit in the feels, as the internet would put it. <laughs> of course. Um, I think, uh, for an example, um, yet again, we're going to spoil some stuff. Uh, Ruby, probably the biggest thing in... In that entire show even uh in season three when uh you know penny dies or even pira um there's just such a big hit to the to the viewers because you know the show has been so happy before and then all of a sudden like two of your you know favorite main characters die and it is you know heart-wrenching it's especially because you're not expecting it. You're expecting, oh, they're going to find a way to overcome this because that's what they've done in the previous seasons. But nope, this one just smacks you in the face with death and destruction. And it's it's a huge tonal shift. It's one that even set the fan base. I know personally the fan base got really upset about that to the point where they were doing all sorts of like online, not online petitions per se, but there's a lot of fan pushback saying that that shouldn't be considered canon, which eventually it kind of evened out, but it was a drastic change that no one was really expecting. Yeah, th that definitely can be done poorly sometimes. I definitely don't think that was the use of it. Uh, I thought that was absolutely brilliant from a story standpoint. Uh, and I think the people who you know saw it were just hurt because they you know their characters that they liked died um but i think it, it definitely can be used poorly um like uh re-zero we were talking about i think in in some parts it was it seemed off like um you know after uh, quite late in the season there was a part where he uh basically saw everyone die which obviously was a super dark shift and it just kind of lasted too long, so it kind of didn't feel the impact of it as much. Uh, it kind of just lasted too long. So again, to go, uh, spoilers here, but to go into a little bit more explanation, if you're not familiar with ReZero, uh, the premise is that the character, every time he dies, he travels back in time to a, to a certain point. It kind of varies. It's like a checkpoint system almost. But at one point, everyone dies, including him. And he goes back in time, and then he spends several episodes and several of his quote-unquote lives just being depressed. So the first time everyone dies, it's kind of interesting, but once you get a few times into it, for us at least, we kind of found it to be really, I don't know, repetitive, I guess would be the correct phrase. He's just depressed yeah. and not doing anything, and the emotional shift is not helping him as a character. The tone shift is not helping him as a character. They're just kind of riding the the tragedy train, so to speak. Right, right. And it, a lot of time that happens. Um, but um, yeah, definitely this tool can't really be used on its own. It has to have some uh, 
some backing behind it, uh, like, you know, just good writing in general. Good writing in general helps. Uh, the characters need to actually be able to grow as a result of it. Again, we're going to use ReZero as an example where they didn't, and as a result, it didn't really have the same kind of emotional impact as, you know, say, Ruby Volume 3 did to me. Uh, another thing, right. though, is that sometimes you can use it just as as a device in and of itself. So uh, this new A Series of Unfortunate Events series on Netflix now, uh, not the movie one, the series version, that one kind of uses tonal shift as its main device, per se, because while it's a very dark story and the, all these terrible things are happening, it presents it in such a lighthearted way that that becomes the gag in and of itself. Right, right. So the other way of doing this, though, is sometimes we're, we've been talking a lot about examples where it's a lighthearted story or lighthearted universe, and then it suddenly becomes dark. Another way to use it that you don't usually see a lot is to have a dark universe or a dark story, a dark tone, and then it suddenly shifts to very lighthearted. Now, I think personally the reason why this isn't used a whole lot is because in a lot of those situations, if it's a light, sh light story that's shifted to a dark tone, that's very shocking. But if it's a dark tone that suddenly shifts to a light-hearted tone, you get the feeling of, oh, when is this going to go wrong and how badly? So it's not <laughs> yeah. not used a whole yeah, lot. I th yeah, I think, um, I, I guess uh, Game of Thrones is a little bit of an example of it. Um, obviously, good stuff doesn't happen too often in that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, but uh, when something does good happen, usually it just means it's something bad to a, another person that you really dislike. But uh, I think that kind of is an example because a lot of time you're like, just yes, this thing happened, like, and then you're 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 excited because finally the good guys have like a win. Um, See, I'm of I'm of the flip thought or flip side or alternative thought on this that I. I think Game of Thrones uses it badly because it's such a dark show and it never really changes a whole lot, just people constantly dying. So that's, to me, the lack of tonal shift almost made it impossible for me to get through more than a few seasons without just needing something lighthearted in my life. Yeah, it is a little consistently dark and only has momentary changes of that. So I think another good example is uh, Rogue One. Uh, this new Star Wars film. I'm assuming everyone's probably watched that, but if not, again, spoilers. Uh, the change here is that Star Wars generally is a lighter, light, more light-hearted story. Not in the sense people do die, yes. Luke's hand gets cut off. If that's a spoiler for you, I'm sorry, but the, the movies are almost 40 years old. Get over <laughs> yourself. Uh, but that's generally... Like, the good guys win... The good guys are going to be happy. It's generally a positive story. Rogue One took that and spun it on its head where the good guys won, but they all died. And that was... For sure. That was, To me, that was very nice because I didn't really want them to escape. If they did escape, then I would have felt more left down than it was just having a very emotional moment where they succeeded in their mission, but they're all still dead. So yeah, this is uh, creating a contrast uh, really can help you immerse... Uh, into a story and its universe um, because honestly like real life has a range of emotions and you know it'd be boring without it so uh, this is probably you know one of our favorite tools to date uh, in story creation and if you want to continue the discussion below uh, keep on posting down there and uh, keep creating see you guys boop <laughs>